Welcome to Adult YPWW. Lesson 4. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's lesson text is coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 8. Today's topic is cry, but don't be a crybaby. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 8. This is the King James Version. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people, spake of stoning him because the soul of the, all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither, thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And the aim of this lesson is to encourage people dealing with discouragement to cry their last tears. The memory verse for today's lesson. I will read the King James Version and then the New Living Translation of John chapter 11, verse 35. Jesus wept. New Living Translation. Then Jesus wept. The introduction says, David and his men had just returned from a battle. They were looking forward to reuniting with their wives and children. But when they got back home, they were horrified by the sight of their city. It was burned down. To make matters worse, all the women and children were captured, had been taken captive. This was more than their hearts could take. David and his big, strong, mighty men broke down and cried like a baby. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 4 says, They lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They literally cried their eyes out. They cried until they could not cry anymore. They got to a point where they cried their last tear. Have you ever been there? Have you ever cried until you could not cry anymore? Have you ever cried until your eyes ran dry? Have you ever cried until there were no more tears left? The discussion says, the sister singing group, Mary Mary, sings about this in their song entitled, Yesterday. The first few lines of this song go, I had enough heartache and enough headache. I have had so many ups and downs, don't know how much more I can take. See, I decided I cried my last tear yesterday. The key word here is decided. If you are going to overcome discouragement, you must make a decision. You must decide that you cried your last tear yesterday. In other words, you must decide that you are not going to go through life like some big crybaby. You must decide that you are not going to cry over everything or over one particular thing. You must decide that you are not going to cry over spilled milk. You must decide that you are not going to keep crying over things that you've already cried about. There is nothing wrong with crying. Crying can be therapeutic. Crying can be cathartic. Crying can help you feel better. But there comes a time when you must stop crying. There comes a time when you make up your mind that you are not going to cry anymore. There comes a time 
When you say like, Mary, Mary, I cried my last tear yesterday. The application says, there are people who are still crying today over stuff that happened yesterday. Not only that, but there are people who are still crying today over stuff that happened months and years ago. There are people who are still crying the blues over past hurts, wounds, offenses, injustices, and the like. It is not the will of God for you to be stuck in the past. It is not the will of God for you to still be hurting over something that happened years and perhaps decades ago. God wants you to be healed. He wants you to be made whole, but you've got to make the decision. You've got to decide to stop reliving your past. You've got to decide to stop wallowing in the misery of yesteryear. You've got to decide to cry your last tear. You've got to tell yourself, I'm not crying anymore. I cried my last tear yesterday. We all know that Jesus wept. He wept at the grave site of Lazarus, but he didn't keep on weeping. There came a point when he stopped weeping and went to work. And this is what you must do. Come to a point where you stop weeping and start working. Be like Jesus and work the works of him that sent you. Get back to working or doing the things that God has called you to do. The lesson illustration. In 2002, a 14-year-old girl named Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped from her bedroom in Salt Lake City. Her abductor was a religious fanatic who forced her to hike up the mountainside behind her home to a makeshift campsite. She understandably felt hopeless at times. She wished she could have just slept the whole time she was in captivity. She did not want to feel the trauma, the pain, or the despair that was happening to her. The amazing thing about it was that there was a point that I stopped crying, Smart said. It's not just because I didn't feel pain anymore, not because I didn't feel sorrow. It was just to keep going. I mean, it just was to survive, to live. The questions for today's lesson, and you can search the scriptures on your own. Question one, how would you define discouragement in one word? Question two, is it just an emotional state or is it a spirit? Does it bear any resemblance to what the Bible calls the spirit of heaviness? Found in Isaiah chapter 61 verse three. Question three, have you ever cried until you could not cry anymore? Question four, have you ever cried until your eyes ran dry? Have you ever cried until there were no more tears left? If so, what was that like? What did that feel like? Question five, is there anything wrong with crying? If not, what are some advantages or benefits of crying? Question six, According to Psalms chapter 30, verse 5, how long should a person weep or cry about a particular person, place, or thing? What practical steps can a person take to move from crying to rejoicing? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.